Live and Love and Slimmigan Brewster. Well, you look at the program, you'll be able to see just how gorgeous her smile was. We just give God the glory for his benevolence for allowing her to have 31,649 days. Hallelujah of her blessed life on earth. I mean, she was the most loving, caring, giving, and most thoughtful mom, grandmom, granny dean, aunt, cousin, and precious friend. And you know, it's amazing that he allowed this to happen after Mother's Day because he blessed this particular world with one of the greatest mothers in the world. Can we just give him glory? Can we just take time right now to celebrate with that? Thank you for your 
shalom, the God of peace that will give us the peace we need today, oh God. Father God, we know, Lord God, that we can rest in you, oh God, that you are our Father, that when our father and our mother forsake us, that you would take care of Take care of this family and her friends, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your benevolent kindness and your loving mercy, oh God. Continue to shine your light to be a light among those that are in the dark, oh God. That they will grow closer to you, Lord God. Even in this pandemic, bring us closer. And on our knees, thanking you every day, oh God. Father God, as the days go by and the, and the phone calls cease, we just ask you just to be with the family. Let them know that you are the way maker, that you are the strong tower, that the righteous can come to you in their state. Oh, we're thanking you, Lord God, for all you have done. Yes. And we thank you for what you're doing right now, oh God. It's in your son, Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now we will have reflections by a friend. Pat Morris, followed by her granddaughter, Heather Driscoll, followed by a celebration and song by Miss, I call her Cap, <laughs> Cap Williams, amen. Right away. Well, 
on top of each other in the car because there was quite a few of us and we was all different ages but she was taking us you know to spend time with us and do things with us and she would take us you know just all over the city whether it was to the store you know to the park or different places she was finding things to do with us you know to, to be able to create all of these memories that keep crossing my mind now today um i can remember her having this special cookie jar on her kitchen in her house and whenever i was coming over i would get there she would say i got those cookies you like i got those cookies you like and then i can remember one night i don't know if she was on the phone or if she was just talking to herself but she kept saying all my grandchildren call me big when some of my grandchildren gonna call me grandma when they gonna call me grandma all my grandchildren call me big and so me i said okay to myself i was a little girl but I said, Grandma, I want some of those cookies. And she said, she fell out laughing. I mean, she was like, ah, you know, just so tickled by it. And I was like, what, you know, I'm trying to give you what you asked for. But to her, that was just the funniest thing. And of course, needless to say, that was the last time I said, Word, Grandma, I just stuck the bed because I didn't want to laugh at it. But I remember even when she was ready to purchase her um, home that she was having built on um, Hotel Road. And she was so excited about it. I remember that, you know, how long it took to build that house and how steadfast she was with it. How she was so excited to be able to um, have Christmas parties for her family. And when she, she kept saying, when I move in this house, I'm having the first Christmas here at my house. And everybody got to come. And that's exactly what she did. And it was a big deal. I can remember the lake at the uh, house when she had it built. She wanted to go fishing in that lake. And I remember being out there with her all day to catch a fish. And she literally finally caught a fish. And then after she did that, I had to hear the story that she had to tell everybody about the fish that she caught. And she would hold up her hands and say, you know, I caught a fish and it was this big. It was this big. And she told every single person that she came across that same story. Um, I can remember her cooking, you know, for us. Always cooking, always, you know, even willing to show me how to cook stuff sometimes. And I can remember um, one day I caught her listening to rap music. She was actually in her car, and um, I, I thought I heard something, but I wasn't sure. So I started leaning over when I was talking to her, and she said, Oh, you hear that? And she started dancing. She turned the volume up. She said, Yeah, baby, grandma jamming. You ain't no grandma be jamming. I was like, Oh. So that was new. But I remember her even encouraging all of her grandchildren to always get their own money. She would always tell us, because I know after all of my older cousins, Kim and Keith and Shan had all started working at the shop, she told me the same thing, like, come on up to the shop and make you some money. And I can remember her inviting me to do that by being her shampoo assistant sometimes on the back. I remember her retirement party. I remember all the people that celebrated her at the state when she was ready to move on to something different. And I remember her even starting her own consulting business where she was consulting maintenance in the town on the side after she retired. And then I remember, you know, once she got older and wasn't driving as much, she asked, um, you know, to be driven to her doctor's appointment. And I can remember spending some time with her even that way. But with all of the memories that I that I consider every memory I have a good memory.
to everyone. Yes, Mr. Morgan, but this is not. I didn't see it.
is coming from the message version that teaches us this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed by believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. The title of my message today is, What a Love. And my subtopic is, The Power of Three. Then we bow our heads. Father God, we just come thanking you again, Lord God. We thank you for the moments. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for our lives. Father God, as I divide the word to your people, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive and understand your word, Lord God. But we know that this life will pass away, but your word, Lord God, will live throughout eternity. Bless us in a mighty way today, oh God, that everyone that is under the sound of my voice will know who you are and your power. For you are our God, our Abba Father, and we love and we adore you. Bless this celebration in a mighty way. In your son Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, that I pray. Amen. During these unknown and unprecedented times, it's without a doubt that we have been able to acknowledge more than ever before our appreciation and our respect for all the essential workers. Well, I'm proud to announce that Willa Dean was one of the most amazing women that God allowed us to love, and she was essential to his work. Dean was incredibly independent, exceptionally educated, over the top opinionated, unbelievably beautiful, and a seriously strong African-American woman. She danced to her own beat. She knew her work, and she refused to go along just to get along. Whenever she went, her presence was made known. She dealt with obstacles and challenges with an inner strength unlike any other. Aunt Dean accepted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at an early age. She grew up and was nurtured by a strong black woman, we affectionately call Big Mama, who was a devout Christian woman, whose father, Reverend O'Neill, was a traveling evangelist. She was raised in a loving and caring environment. Big Mama was an entrepreneur. She owned her own salon, Thomas House of Beauty. She was our great matriarch. And it was her that taught Undine about beauty culture and being in the business. Dean gave birth to three handsome men. She truly loved and adored her boys. Oh, what a love. But you know what's incredible? There is something about the power of three. The number three represents triads of completeness, such as the trinity of blessings, grace, mercy, and peace. Remember back in the day, the TV nurse used to, networks used to use the number three in their shows. You had the three students, my three sons, three's company. And then there's the saying, three strikes and you're out. The saying, trouble comes in threes. And then you even had Goldilocks and the three bears. And then more powerful than anything, we have the Holy Trinity. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And even on last week, when my dear cousin Herman called me, it was on May 3rd, to tell me, to prepare me, that Aunt Dean was turning and about to transition. And then he told me what her wishes were. So there's power in and don't you find it is amazing that she was born in 1933. God blessed her with a combined total of 33 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And he even exceeded her blessings with four great-grandchildren. Now, 
Now the number four reminds me of three Hebrew boys. Again, the number three. Oh, you know the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who was thrown in the fiery furnace. Yet when it was all over, they discovered that there was a fourth person. God was with them. You see, in the natural eyes that was supposed to burn, but God spared them. In the same way, Dean probably felt many times raising Shadrach. Oh, I mean Hermes. Meshach, whoops, I mean right. Abednego, wow, I mean Bobby Lee. She felt many times situations and circumstances were sticky and hot. But Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 16th verse tells her, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked. I believe there were many fiery darts from the adversary, but she used her shield of faith to extinguish the attacks that were positioned to consume her life. I believe she maintained a posture of continuous prayer, and she had to learn that even though the test may have been extremely hot, our gracious God was right there in the midst of it. I know she believed a 
biological needs at the center that she was assigned to. Psalms 121, 1 and 2 reads, I lift up my eyes to the heat from whence cometh forth my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You know, Psalm 121 is a song of a